99,000 people. I think I heard that over the PA system. Not, not surprised, but extremely uh, uh, grateful to come watch a scrimmage. At times, not a very pleasant scrimmage. And uh, um, we grab a hand after each time we uh, come into the stadium. And we're very grateful for the blessings to be able to play this great game. That's the first thing. Second thing, where we play it, and that's the Ohio State University that had, uh, I imagine it has to be some kind of uh, record. And then uh, who we do it with, which is most importantly. And then I was asked, uh, by us, I think the Big Ten Network right after the scrimmage saying, how did we improve as a team? I think Lisa asked me that question. The answer is, and I just told our players this, we did not improve as a team. That was not a good team out there. Uh, so we did not improve as a team. And very rarely, um, if you're fortunate with to be healthy, and you know, last year I did because we were so young, I felt like, like we got better as a team because we weren't very good, but you saw them getting better as a team. As a team, that's much worse than what you saw um, in January, obviously. Uh, but we did individually get better. And uh, some of the names off the top, Billy Price is, is playing outstanding football for us right now. Uh, Chase Ferris has earned his way. He's a starting right tackle at Ohio State. Billy Price is, is night and day what he was a year ago. Bronte Dunn has earned a right to contribute to the Buckeyes next year. Sam Hubbard is going to be in rotation. Worley, uh, I thought, played outstanding today. He's had a very good spring. Noah uh, Brown uh, has had an excellent spring, made some plays today. Gary Ann Connolly is penciled in now. He's, uh, we're going to make that call to his family and say, your, your son has earned a right to start at the Ohio State. And Tommy Shutt. This guy's had very good spring. So in, those are some of the individuals out the top of my head. In the fourth quarter, I started writing some names down. So we did improve individually, but we did not improve as a team. So here's a dilemma. And you can tell my mind's spinning here a little bit. How do we get better as a team uh, after we get them out of here for a couple weeks, You know, whether it be team functions or you know, I'm, I'm still we got to wrap our Because this is a critical off season for us. This is really critical. Because uh, like I said, we did not improve. No, it's no one's fault. How do you get better as a team when half your team is not playing? And it's because of injury or it's because of 2000 club, because the head coach made a decision not to uh, rep out some guys that had uh, you know, 2000 competitive reps. So that's going to be interesting to watch for the Buckeyes uh, this summer and how they handle themselves, how they behave, how they train, and then how they come together as a team. Because that team's got to get much better by the time uh, Coach Mick hands me the uh, team like he does every summer. So I'll answer some questions. Far left, Doug? Urban, as you talk about this, lots of times you'll sort of maybe give us a grade on things or how you view things. Like overall for spring, like what grade would you give this team for 15 uh, spring practices? What's ah? Uh, <laughs> uh, I'd rather go individually because, uh, and that's kind of what I just did, you know. Uh, but as a team, it was an interesting. I don't know if I've had a spring like this one, you know, and it's. And, uh, I do feel good because we're going to be at full strength. Now, there's not some stupid injury that all of a sudden you're like, why did you do that? And I've been in that situation, like, why did that just happen? And you're just sick to your stomach all. The other name is Taekwon Lewis. He's a guy that's earned, uh, uh, he's penciled in to be in the rotation along with Sam Hubbard. But so I would say on that end, right decision. Now we got to somehow, this is really a valuable uh, next few months. You always talk for a game like this. You want to see young guys when they get into a big state. What do you really look for? How do you sort of tell that a young guy yeah. can handle it? Great question. Paris Campbell is a great example. I had to make Paris Campbell. I called him, and you know, here's a kid that just turned 17 years old. He's about to hyperventilate, and he's really not. He's fine. And, and I grab him. I need you to win the game right here. I need you to score. I was like on the four-yard line, and he, and you know, if he kind of looked at me like, you know, the heck with this man, or you know, he, he was, he took the ball, he put his left foot in the ground, and he dove in, you know, and made a great cut and scored. And I saw his celebration in the end zone. That, that's one I remember from the spring game. That's going to help him get in the rotation. That's just an example. Other example, I asked a couple guys to make a play, and they didn't do it. Now i got to find out why when I meet with them next week and just get into the psychological impact that playing in the stadium has on a player. Back row right, uh, one question each, please. Steve. Yeah, Coach, uh, Cardale, does that kind of fall along the lines yeah. of what you're talking about? Uh, when he was dialed in, he was moving his team up and down the field, but in a that typical not game, a you're day. not going to throw 12 bombs like that. I mean, yeah, he uh, that wasn't a, a Cardale day. Um, you know, he played behind a makeshift offensive line. So I can give you a bunch of excuses, uh, but he's got to be much sharper than that. For the spring, I'd, I'd give him a very good spring, though. Uh, you didn't necessarily see it today. Front row left, Rusty. Is there an area in particular that 
really has to make strides in the summertime? I mean, uh, I oh, mean, yeah. running backs, obviously, without Ezekiel, no. that hurts you a lot, but is there a particular area? In the well, running backs are, you know, I took the, the top two running backs from last year, very good players who didn't, didn't play running back this spring. Bronte Dunn has kind of solidified that, so I feel good about three of them uh, right now. You got Mike Weber showing up here pretty soon, too, um, which is still, you need four. You need four running backs. Uh, the area is offense line. That's the problem. And once again, not the starters because I feel good. Once once that front five's in there, I feel you know it's it's that whole and and, and line. I'm where you know everybody reminds me because we're very impatient. We would have said that about Billy Price's first year. We just said that about Taylor Decker's first year. So they need time to develop. But I I'm very alarmed uh, by the uh, the second group of offensive linemen right now. Front row, Todd. You guys are going to leave here a couple weeks. You're going to go through player evaluations. After all that, how much time will you spend thinking about the decision that you have to make sometime in August about who your quarterback is going to be? I won't spend much time at all about that, other than making sure Braxton's getting the proper treatments uh, and JT Barrett's moving forward. And then uh, how we're going to work the summer as far as those kids throwing together. And uh, I am not going to say how am I going to – the one thing I will do to answer your question, I think you're heading there, is I'm going to come up with some kind of system throughout training camp that we're going to chart everything that everyone does. And we've kind of done it, but not to the degree that we're going to do it this year. Because you, you have to be right on now. This can't be, uh, well, I, I'm going with him because it's my gut feeling. Those gut feelings are, can't, it's got to be statistical analysis and, and uh, data back, backed up uh, on who's going to play quarterback. We have time just for a couple more because I want you to get some players back row, Pat. Urban, with the quarterback situation, do you give them marching orders into the offseason, work on this, this, and this, and what would those orders be? Oh, Tim Beck is a quarterback coach. He'll be more specific about what fundamentals to work on. Once again, Braxton is get healthy. and uh, But we'll do we, – we, uh, we do compartmental throwing with groups. So, for example, um, JT will kind of coach him up, so you take a certain group of receivers and work on this, and it's going to be more compartmental uh, improvement. Um, and then uh, Coach Beck will handle the individual improvement, technique improvement. And final questions, Tim? Yeah, Irvin, just two quickies. Number one, following up on what you just said about the QBs, is it so they will know where they stand day to day too? I mean, yeah. so it's not a surprise? Yeah. Well, yeah. You know, there's going to be a lot of people interested. Yeah. I know you guys, but... The families and the player are much more. I, I want to be able to look those people in the eye and say, here's where we're at, and not be a shocker when it happens. Yeah. But I keep, here's what you need to do to get better, and here's where we're at, and, and keep pushing. You know, I think Nick Connor made some plays out there today. Uh, yeah, he's are, good. are you, name me a couple of those young guys that maybe jumped out at you. I know you named the guys, but are some, some guys kind of surprise you this spring. Obviously, he's an early enrollee and stuff. Yeah, he was good. I, we, we had high expectation for him, though. I hope he doesn't redshirt and gets involved in kicking game. But he had a very good had a good day today. He's a tough guy that plays hard. That's a good, uh, good qualities to have.